Hi everyone, in this short little video I just want to go ahead and derive the demand curve for bonds. And to keep things simple, we'll make this a zero coupon bond and it's one period, whether you want to call it a year or a month or whatever, it doesn't really matter. But it has a face value of $1,000. Over here on the vertical axis we have the price of the bonds, and so this is how much the investor is paying to get $1,000 a year from now, or one period from now. To make it simple so we don't have to worry about some things, we'll just go ahead and call it a U.S. Treasury Security, whether it's a bond, whether it's a, and we'll make it a one-year Treasury Security. All right, so we just, to go ahead and derive things, we need to just go ahead and have a frame of reference. So I picked a point at random, I called it point A. There's a particular price of bond and a particular quantity of bonds that investors want to hold. Now remember, there's an inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the yield to maturity. So the higher the price of the bond, the lower the yield to maturity. The worse things are for, uh, or the less you're going to be compensated for loaning money to the, in this case, the U.S. Treasury. Whereas the lower the price of the bond, the higher to the yield to maturity, the greater the reward to you for loaning funds to the tre U.S. Treasury for one year. All right. So with that in mind, just simply ask yourself the following question. Suppose the price of a bond falls, and it doesn't matter why right now. We're just saying, suppose the price of a bond falls. Will participants in financial markets want to hold more or, or fewer U.S. Um, Treasury securities? Well, if you think about it, if the price of a bond falls, then you have to pay less to get $1,000 from the U.S. Treasury one year from now. Okay? Well, if that's the case then these bonds look like a better investment, right? So as the price falls, you have to give up less now to get the same amount of money in one year. So they become a better investment. So and participants in financial markets will want to have, hold more of these bonds. How much more? I don't know. We'll just say it's all the way out here to B2, which means we're now at point B. And for us, two points will determine the line, so we'll just go ahead and call that our demand curve for bonds. So I'll just call that B for bonds, D in the superscript, demand curve. Okay? And that's just the short little derivation of the bond demand curve.